All right, guys, more on Lesson 6.2. This is Task 4. All right, simplify radical expressions involving nth roots. The same properties that apply to square roots also apply to nth roots. The table summarizes these properties. The properties hold for all positive real numbers, a and b, and all positive integer values of n. All right, so you can see the properties. We've talked about this before, but just to recap, okay, and now we have an nth root, not a square root. So in this case, there is a fourth root of 48. So you're looking at something that is a perfect fourth root. So 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 to the fourth power is a perfect fourth root. And that's how they pull out the 2 here. And then fourth root of 3 just remains the same because it's not a perfect fourth root. Down here, we're looking for a perfect cube root, and 125 is 5 to the third power. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So this can be rewritten as 5 cubed, and the cube root of something cubed is just that number, so 5. On the bottom, 8 is also a perfect cube. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, so 2 cubed is 8. So you can rewrite that as just 5 halves. All right, and just using variables, the algebraic way, this is an example um, to keep in your notes. All right, you can verify these properties of nth roots by using the definition of rational exponents and either the power of a product property or the power of a quotient property for rational exponents. All right, product of roots. All right, so product just means multiply. So you have an nth root of a b so a b is multiplied under the nth root so what they're saying is you can rewrite that from radical form to rational exponent form so it would be a b in parentheses raised to the one over n power remember the root becomes the denominator and that can um, be written as a to the one over n times b to the one over n same base here uh, or sorry different bases here but same denominator all right, and then that a to the 1 over n is the same as nth root of a, and b to the 1 over n is the same thing as n, nth root of b. So you can see that that just kind of proves that the nth root of a, b can be written as the nth root of a times the nth root of b, and they're just doing that using properties of exponents. All right, quotient rule, same thing. Quotient of roots, nth root of a over b equals a over b in parentheses to the 1 over n power. Again, n is your root. That equals um, a to the 1 over n divided by b to the 1 over n. Again, we just kind of distribute that um, exponent to both the numerator and denominator. And because that can be written in radical form, that's the same thing as nth root of a over nth root of b. And again, that's just showing you the quotient rule, how it goes from taking this um, to this using properties of exponents. All right, simplify the expression. We've got a cube root of 64 divided by y squared. All right, 64 is a perfect cube, but y squared is not. So let's look at the process here. So the first thing they're going to do is say, Cube root is 64, and they reduced it to 4, so they are going to go ahead and reduce that. And then the cube root of y squared is in the denominator, and we don't like to have square roots in the denominator. So remember rationalizing the denominator. Since this is a cube root, we need something cubed in the denominator. So they're going to multiply by cube root of y because same base, add exponents, y squared and y to the first is y to the third, and that would cancel and give you just y in the denominator. All right, so remember, when you're rationalizing the denominator, you're going to multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, and when you do that, you're just kind of manipulating the problem. You're not really changing the problem, okay? So that's going to give you 4 times cube root of y over the cube root of y cubed, which is just y. All right, so it says match each property with the rewritten expression that it justifies. All right, so what do we have here? We have cube root of 64 over y squared as cube root of 64 over 
cube root of y squared. So this is just showing us the quotient root, quotient of roots property. All right, so here we are. We're rationalizing the denominator, but when we do that, we are multiplying. So this is going to be a product of roots property. So we're just going to multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, so that we can simplify that and make it look a little nicer. All right, that's all for task. All right, 6.2, fifth and final task. Real world models having rational exponents. All right, biology. The function E of M roughly models the life expectancy E in seconds of an animal in captivity that has a mass of M kilograms. The function R of M approximates the heart rate R in beats per second of an animal with a mass M in kilograms. Approximately how many times will a greater kudu's heart beat over its expected lifetime in capacity? All right, so you can see the mass of the greater kudu is 200 kilograms, okay? All right, since the units for E of M are seconds and the units for R of M are heartbeats per second, multiply the functions to determine the total number of heartbeats. For the greater kudu, replace M with 200. All right, remember M is mass. And the mass of the kudu they gave us in the picture is 200 kilograms. All right, so this um, equation here comes from the equation they gave us. If you look up here, E of M is 3.17 times 10 to the 8th power times M to the 1 5th power. Okay, so that is this first part here, except instead of M, we're replacing that with 200 for the mass of the kudu. All right, and then we're going to multiply that by the second equation, R of M, 3.8 times M to the negative one-fourth. Again, 3.8 times instead of M, we're going to replace that with the 200 and raise to the negative one-fourth power. All right, now they're going to rearrange this just using associative property and put these numbers that have um, common things together. All right, so you can see that here they have the same base of 200 raised to an exponent. Over here they've put the numbers together, and that way they can uh, keep using scientific notation um, the way it meant to be. All right, so if you multiply 3.7 times 3.8, that gives you 14.06. Scientific notation has to be a number between 1 and 10. So to make this number between 1 and 10, you're going to move the decimal one place to the left, so this goes down one, the exponent goes up one, okay? So this is a standard from, I don't know, seventh or eighth grade, I believe, maybe ninth grade. But um, if you need a refresher on scientific notation, make sure you remember. The number gets smaller, exponent gets bigger. If this number gets bigger, the exponent gets smaller. So they kind of, they have to go um, in reverse. Anyway, same base here. Same base you're multiplying, so you add exponents, so one-fifth um, plus negative one-fourth. You'd have to have a common denominator, and that would be um, negative one-twentieth. And then, all right, they went ahead and rewrote 200 as 2 times 10 squared, so they're putting that in scientific notation as well. And then, um, because this is a product, both have to be raised to that power, and they just rewrote negative 1 over 20 as um, a decimal, okay? And then just clean that up, simplify it a little bit, and they're going to write this still right here on this next to last line in scientific notation, all right? So we don't like to have decimals and fractions together, but um, they're going to approximate this type this in your calculator, you're going to get an approximate of 1.08 billion, and that is heartbeats, okay? So during a greater kudu's lifetime in, capacity, in captivity, its heart will beat about 1.08 billion times. All right, so that's a lot of heartbeats. All right, choose the justification for the steps 
of the simplification. What property justifies rearranging the factors in the product in the first step? Okay, so we looked at these rearranging these. That's just associative property. What property justifies rewriting? All right, that's the same base. That's the product. Power of products property. And what property justifies rewriting this as two separate things? So that is... Actually, that's the power of a product property. I think I got the other one backwards. Let's see. Power of a product. So this one is what property justifies rewriting 200 as same base at exponents. That's just a product of powers, I guess. And what justifies writing 2 to that in the denominator? Okay, so if you go up here and look, um, this was a negative exponent, and it moved to the bottom, so that should just be something about a negative exponent. Definition of a negative power. All right, let's see if I got B part right. Yes. All right, so um, they call these a little bit different than what I have like committed to memory. So, um, but there you go. That is task five. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, here's a couple examples from six two. So we're going to do parentheses of three raised to the fourth power, and I'm going to have to bring my arrow to close this off. And then I'm going to raise it again to the one-third power. So again, if you type these in correctly, your calculator does a good job with giving you an answer for this, but not if, um, if you don't type it in correctly. All right, so 3 to the fourth to the one-third power is approximately 4.3. So if I want to write about 4.3... All right, and you can do the same thing with the next one as well. So you can just type it in. Let's do parentheses, and we're going to do 625 divided by 16. And then we're going to raise that to the 3 fourths power. And that's going to be about 15 point, or 15.625. Alright, so that's just a couple examples using your calculator to plug those in. Let's look at a couple of just exponent properties. Alright, so here, because this is in parentheses, that means both of those are raised to that power. So we're going to have y to the 2 fifths doesn't change. And then we're going to have x to the 1 half power to a power you multiply, so times 4 fifths, and then y to the 4 fifths. Alright, and then that becomes y to the sixth fifths, same base, you add exponents. And here I'm multiplying, so I multiply across the top, so I've got 4 over 10, and 4 over 10 reduces to 2 over 5. Usually we put our variables in alphabetical order, so if you want to do that, you can, but that's how you simplify that one. All right, so on the next one, I'm going to try to get through this one as quickly as I can. So 4, we have to have a common denominator since this one is 4 to the 3 halves. We can write this as 2 over 2. And then a to the 1 half and a to the 3 fourths. So this just means 2 minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then this would be times 2, so that's going to be 2 halves minus 3, so a to the negative 1 fourth. 
And that's all I can do on this 